So this is a continuation of the meeting that's <clears throat> started in September. Mary hasn't arrived yet. We'll proceed without her, but um, perhaps Deborah, a good thing to do would be to display the opinion of council that we got from town. Yes, let me just get that right now, everyone. And, and let me make it as large as I can. So this is this arrived to Roger. It is from town council and I'll just let people read it. Unless you want me to read it out loud for the record, Roger. I don't know if you feel comfortable doing that, but it. Okay, so Roger, this will confirm our television, com our telephone conversation of September 9th, 2022, regarding the application of Julie Sibley for a flag lot special permit for property located off of North Street. The proposed flag lot is shown on the attached plan excerpt. Based on information you have provided me and the requirements of the zoning bylaw, it is my opinion that the lot proposed for establishment as a flag lot does not qualify for a flag lot special permit for at least two reasons. The first is the requirement that a flag lot may only be created by subdividing a lot that was in existence at the time of adoption of the flag lot provision, April 27, 1987, subsection 171-241.A, you have informed me that the applicant has confirmed that the lot from which the flag lot is proposed to be separated did not exist as of April 27, 1987. The second is that the bylaw requires that the lot from which the flag lot is to be created, the so-called front lot, will, after separation from the flag lot, meet all of the zoning dimensional requirements normally required in the district, subsection 171-241.E. The application plan does not show compliance with that requirement. There is no remaining front lot, only parcels designated as not a building lot and proposed to be combined with other lots shown on the plan. In addition, the proposed flag lot is already the site of a constructed dwelling and the flag lot provisions of the zoning bylaw contemplate the creation of a flag lot as a vacant lot for new construction, not the conversion of developed land into a flag lot. The bylaw speaks to flag lot development use for single family purposes only and width of the lot where the principal building is to be constructed. Subsections 171-24, 1.C, D, and H, emphasis supplied. Oh, Mary is here. Hello. Hi, Mary. Hello. Mary, we were just reading in town council's opinion. That's all we've done. We've opened the hearing and read, read the opinion. So Mary, when you're ready to take notes, let me know. <clears throat> and the uh, who do we who do we have attending from the board? Is me, Bob, and Roger, Deborah, and Fred, Fred, and Fred. Yes, Fred is here. I'm sorry, he's not in the in my window. Okay, so we opened at what six forty? Mm -hmm. Yep. And all we did was read this document, which I can send to you unless unless you already have the. I I have it. Right. Yeah. I, I have it and I'm looking at it on the screen now. Okay. Okay, I'm all set. Okay, so um, <clears throat> to the petitioner, you've heard and you've read the letter. It's a fairly strong letter and I would give you an option that we would give any applicant or petitioner when it seems like you're facing a strong headwind uh, to withdraw the petition if if you so want to do so. Otherwise, we can proceed to vote. Um. Well, seeing I'm I'm on behalf of Julie as the petitioner because it was something that affected my lot as well. Um, 
if those are my options, I guess I would withdraw the petition. Um, however, I would like to request that perhaps the zoning board or even myself will make a request to the planning board to clarify that the bylaw about splitting from a lot, because if we had known that we could have done that originally, we would have done it to begin with. We would have made a flag lot to begin with. Um, and we, because we read the bylaw incorrectly, I guess, um, felt that we had to have that 200 feet of frontage. Um, so it, it's just not clear. That's to me, it's not written clearly. And secondly, um, where council says that there would be no, um, let's see, the so-called front lot will, after separation from the lag, flag lot, meet all of the zoning dimensional requirements normally required in the district. The application does not show, oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, does not show compliance with that requirement. Requirement, but it would have its flag lot frontage of 40 feet. So I'm not quite sure I understand that part of the. Well, what he's saying, Lynn, is that the remaining lot still has to have 200 feet if that's what the requirement is in that zone. But if it's a, how do you have 200 feet if you're creating a flag lot? You have 200 plus the necessary distance of the flag. A, lot. a flag lot is 40 feet. So you need at least 240 before you come before the board with a flag lot petition. I, I don't understand that because I thought a flag lot was to have a narrow, a 40 foot on the road frontage. It's, it's gotta come from something. That's what he, I think he calls it the parent lot. It's gotta come from the parent. Yes, and if we had done that originally, if we had known that we could have done that originally in 2010 when we first did it, we would have done it. But the way the bylaw is written, we didn't think we could do it that way. So now we were just trying to rectify something that was, it was misinterpreted back in 2010. I understand and I'm willing to withdraw the petition um, and rather than going towards a vote and everything. So. Um, okay, yeah, I certainly understand because we've wrestled with this over the years that it's not a model of clarity. And anything the planning board can do to clean that up would be appreciated. <laughs> I <laughs> imagine because you're the ones that have to enforce what the planning board passes. So yes, I, I understand that. While you're talking to them, ask them if they could simply <clears throat> number the, um, the sections of the table of uses. That would be ideal. Like if you opened up page eight and you told someone to look at number four, which was oh. one. That would be wonderful. Uh, okay. Instead, you have to thumb down and say, look at the fourth box from the bottom or something like that. Yeah. I think it, uh, the table of use also needs some updating with the new um, uh, new businesses that are out there that aren't included on the table of use. So I think that it does need some updating anyways. So you never know what category they should be put in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and while, okay. we're at, while we're at it, an index would be handy too, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's for another day. In any event, so the withdrawal procedure is a simple one, but we just like a handwritten, well, in the old days when we were meeting in person, a handwritten statement, I hereby withdraw my petition. Okay. Now, here we're on Zoom, so if, if you, and your daughter's the petitioner, if she can just get it in to- Yeah, the, we will, yeah. I will get, I will, we will get you that. That'll close the record on it. Okay. Okay, anything else? Anyone else want to speak? I'm just really sorry, Lynn. We always, you know, look for some wiggle room in the bylaw, especially <clears throat> for projects, you know, that seem like they can work. But once we got this opinion, it was just really hard yeah. to, find, okay. to find any wiggle room at all. I understand. But would there be any wiggle room in the variance? I know they're hard to get in Wheatley, but... We have, well, we don't, it would be even less wiggle room, I think, wouldn't you say, Roger? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, the position we are put in often is that we're asked to 
project how we might decide something in the future. So we're not a we're not a planning group in that sense. We we just hear what comes before us. So to plan that whole uh, that whole idea out in public is is really beyond the, the scope of where the board wants to go. So, but I do agree the statement is true. The way the ZBA is historically tough on variances. All right, so I believe we have another meeting coming in. So why don't we um, close this one and thank everybody for their time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We do not have anyone in the waiting room. I'm just letting people know. Is that scheduled for seven? Yeah, it's not scheduled till seven. Seven, yeah. Okay. Well, five minute break. Okay. Sure. Okay. See you soon. Mary, how are you feeling? Better. It's you know, I'm still tired, but it's things are things are headed down the right track. And your husband? He's doing better than I am. He he didn't have it as he, he wasn't affected as much. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm knowing so many people who are testing positive, even you know. Yeah, but, but it's so well, bad. It's really hard when two people are are ill at the same time. <clears throat> it's annoying to get this far in the game without it, and then get it. But on the other hand better now than back in the old days oh my god yes oh yes we were saying talking about that earlier that thank god for these vaccines <coughs> had you already had your um bivalent booster no i yeah. didn't get that one yet i haven't i'm getting mine on saturday um and I was wondering if I was waiting too long. So now that you've had it, what do you have to do? Wait a month or two months? Or? Oh, it's a, well, it kind of depends on where you get your information. Oh. My sister works, you know, in Natick at a school and she had it and they told her, you know, but five, five days after the onset of your first symptoms, they didn't even tell her to check and make sure she doesn't test positive still. <laughs> wow. Come back to work. It's not the way it was in the beginning, you know. And that, no, I've, but, I've definitely heard about you've got to isolate for five days. And then once you test negative, do you come back with a mask or something like well, that? Well, everybody's, you know... <laughs> They're not going to tell people you don't have to wear a mask because they'd like it if everybody still wore a mask, but yeah. almost nobody does anymore. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's 
you're supposed to still, you know, yeah, wear a, once you go back into society, keep other people in mind and don't. <laughs> oh my God. You know, it, it just sounds like it's pretty loosey goosey. It, my, my brother's sis, uh, wife was talking to someone online and they were, she said something about masks and they said, well, yeah, you can, if you want to. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, yeah. oh, Mary, were, were, were you really, <coughs> oh, I can still hear it. So was it, did it feel mostly like a bad cold? Well, I was under the covers for two and a half days. Yeah. I got up to do what needed to be done, but I went right back under the covers. Yeah, it was a bad, it was, I think what my husband had was more like a cold and what I had felt more like the flu, you know, it was the full symptoms. He just had, he never catches much of anything. So, you know, when I heard him sounding stuffy and then one day he sort of exploded with <laughs> sneezing and coughing and, and wow. blowing nose, you know, I said, well, <laughs> I think we better get testing here. I didn't get symptoms until two days later. Yeah. And uh, I got them, you know, it was like at night and it came on pretty fast and the next day and the day after that were kind of trashed but yeah. after once it once it turned the corner things got better not as fast as they had got bad but pretty quickly actually so yeah yeah oh, not, I'm sorry uh, it's a pain but i'm not i'm not going to complain compared to what it <coughs> might have been <coughs> Yeah. So yeah, some people who have it will go out and keep their distance and wear masks. <laughs> Others won't be. You know, one of my one of my friends, she has um, type one diabetes, and she was telling me she was in the stop and shop picking up her insulin, and a woman came in to pick up the medication that's provide uh, that's prescribed for COVID, like what is it, Paxlovid or something yeah, like something that. Something like that, yeah. It. And the pharmacist said to the woman, she said, wait a minute, this is for you? She said, you can't be in the store with COVID. And the woman just sort of scoffed and went shopping after she picked up her medication. Oh, shopping, yeah. <laughs> Apparently she didn't have sufficient symptoms. <laughs> to keep her out of everyone's hair or very little thought for others <laughs> okay i will turn we still do not have our petitioner folks hmm. and we are recording we've been recording i had reason to be in contact with him by email last night and i said let, please let me know whether you begin and he said i should to i should be able to you know in all likelihood, I should be able to be there unless something crazy comes up. So I would I'd certainly, I, I would give them a little, a little time on this. Um, okay. I'm just letting you know there's no one in the waiting room. Well, I don't know if he's having any trouble connecting. He didn't sound like he had done this before, you know, ever. He's, he's not from Waitley, so he's he's maybe not used the system before. I could always send him an email. I have his email here. What's his name? Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Actually, I have a phone number for him, too. Hold on a moment. It's Eric. Eric, Eric. Eric Boliski. Yeah. Bernardston Masks. Let me... If he hasn't done this before, Roger, do you want me to go out and get his uh, application in case we want to look at it? Sure. Okay. All right. I didn't know if um, all right, I'll be I'll be back. Um, people's phone numbers are on the applications now too. So I could give them a call or some. Roger, you could if, if we want to do that, but 
Uh, let's give him a call in five minutes. Let's see if he comes. Last oh. last night he d- he did seem like, you know, he was definitely planning on being there. But okay, it's up. We can get it if we need it. All right. This is just the replacement of a sign. Yes. One What's sign this? for another sign. Yeah. Okay. Bob, you should tell some stand up stand up jokes for the amusement of our audiences. Oh yeah, yeah, the old uh, English teacher stand up jokes. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's, here's an interesting one. So I had the opportunity to attend a. Um... We are recording. <laughs> just like. Letting... Oh, it's okay. Okay, just letting everyone know. I attended a planning board meeting at another Franklin County town. I won't say which one. It was by phone, and there was this very, um, uh, he was an angry former petitioner who was trying to bring a petition from five years in the past forward because there was some language in there where one board member said something, and there was minutes as to whether he and this other person, who happened to be my client, had an agreement over the use of this driveway. Well, come to find out, they never had a written agreement about it. There was some discussion of it in the planning board minutes. So he was trying to use those minutes as proof positive that they had this binding agreement between them. That's creative. And of course, now there was this dispute. So, and they got an opinion from town council that said the meeting was well in the past. No one ever appealed from it. It can't be reopened up. And you can talk to the man, but it, it can't just can't open up that meeting again, take new testimony about what the substance of that agreement was or might have been. And he was very unhappy with that information. I didn't have to really speak because the this was all like coming out and it was obvious they weren't going to be doing anything for him. So then he accused one of the board members of being biased against him. And the reason, his reasoning was (laughs) that that member had said, apparently before the meeting started, that there's two sides to every story. And so (laughs) he took that as bias against him. And then, then he left in a huff. And they continued to talk about it afterwards. Um, And, and the, the woman who had made that statement, the two sides every story, was just like, said, that is the most neutral thing that anybody can ever say about any dispute, that there's two sides to every story. Why I'm being accused of bias as a result of that. I mean, I, I guess the answer would be to even admit that the other side has a story is, is bias. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, but it was, it was good for a laugh. And so... It's one of those, my dad taught me, he said, if the, in the case of a court, if the judge is in your favor or leaning in your favor, don't say a word and let him do what he's going to do. Don't pipe up and try to ruin it. So I, I, didn't, I didn't really say a word. <laughs> I just really looked in here for the, you know, for the other side. And I said, all right, noted. Next. <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm thinking, Bob, as English teachers, we know that there can be like a thousand sides to every story. <laughs> you think of the great literature of the world. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish we could. I wish we could convince Congress of that. Oh, I know it. I was. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> no, nope, there's one way: the righteous way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we are still awaiting our petition. I'll give I'll give him a call. Um, you want a number? 
Name and a number, sure. Okay, so hang on. I'm just going to it. Uh, his name is Eric Boliski or Boliski. Yeah. The number is 413-522-4106. All right, let's give it a try. <clears throat> Oh, hi, is this Eric Poliski? Oh, hi, I'm calling from the Waitley Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm Roger Lipton, and we had you scheduled for a seven o'clock start time tonight. Oh, okay, that's why we called. We thought maybe there was a technical issue. So, um, he can phone in. You can go to is one option that you have. Do you have the Zoom uh, feature on your computer? Because I can give you the meeting ID and the password, and that's often a quick way to get in. Let me know when you're ready. Phone could work, yeah. All right, meeting ID is 890-448-79430. Passcode 557-967. Okay, hang on, he's here. Oh, okay. Okay. I see you're coming in, so I'm gonna hang up, okay? See you soon. Coming in by phone? Oh, he did it. Um, I think his computer's connecting by audio, now he's gonna come in, probably his picture. Um, let me see if I can unmute him, ask to unmute. Hello? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. All right, great. <clears throat> Are you going to try to connect by video? You don't have to, but you can. Uh, I don't have video on this computer. All right, then that means we're ready. So uh, the way we work here, Eric, is uh, first of all, I'm Roger Lipton. I spoke to you on the phone just now. Yep. Uh, the chair person. And we have Robert Smith and Deborah Carney as the, uh, the full members. And we have Fred Olaski, who's a um, part-time member here. And 
We have Mary McCarthy, who's our recording secretary. So we're going to start with Mary reading the legal notice, and then I'll ask you if that's an accurate <clears throat> description of what you're trying to do. So go ahead, Mary. Uh, hold on a moment, please. <laughs> Got to get... Sorry. <laughs> Coming through. <clears throat> Okay, the following is a legal notice that ran in the Greenfield Recorder on September 22nd and 29th of 2022. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, October 6th, 2022 at 7 p.m. On September 14th, Eric Beliski applied to replace the current sign for Whateley Self Storage with a two sided backlit 16 square foot sign on premises located at 94 State Road. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Whateley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. And it gives the uh, access code for the computer link, meeting ID and passcode, and also two different toll-free numbers that can be used to join by phone. Uh, this notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. The ad is signed Roger P. Lipton Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals, September 22nd and 29th, 2022, dates of publication in the paper. Okay, does that sound like an accurate uh, description of what you're trying to do? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to replace the sign with a, a better a better sign that's uh, doesn't have I was trying I I think I I tried to follow all the um, all the regulations for the sign. I know that uh, I was told that they don't currently the sign has two upward facing uh, lights that shine upwards. So that's why I tried to do the backlit so it's not it won't be disturbing the, the skyline. Do we have uh, pictures or, or sketches in the application? I can bring that up. Just one second. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Let me just, unfortunately, the picture is sideways. I don't have the ability to change that. I can't also make it larger, so everybody needs to tilt their head. Um, I can, well, I can make it a little larger, but because it's sideways, that's what it looks like. Now, is that the old one or the new one? Oh, it's, the old one is, be, you can see the old one behind it. He put the new one in, yeah, that's the old one. And then the new one's going to be a lower, a much lower, uh, sign i see <clears throat> okay and it's <clears throat> back with you say um our sign regulations say signs may be lighted internally or externally but illumination of all signs shall be of a white light and shall be shielded or indirect so that backlit is it a white light yeah yeah it's interior okay And um, I know the dimensions were probably read already, but can someone compare the old dimensions to the new dimensions? Um, I don't know that we have that information on this application. Okay. Uh, let me just check to see, but I don't 
think so. When I looked at it earlier, replace the current sign with a new sign with an image attached, but we don't have uh, written dimensions. Okay, so why don't you tell us, Eric? Uh, so they're using, they would use the two concrete, there's two concrete uh, foundations that the poles are in now. So he's gonna be using the same, the same uh, ones and it should, like it should be pretty close to the same, pretty close to the same size as what's there as far as the signage goes. Well, do you know the signage sign that the dimensions that I put in the ad came from what's written around the photo. Mary, I'm sorry, I don't have the ad. Could you could you read those out loud? Okay, I'll have to get it back. Um, I well, can... hang on. Let me see if I can get it. Um, let me just. I just wondered if they. Yeah, I would have to go out to. Um... Okay, sorry. Let me go to the legal notice. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm sorry. This is just the legal notice for the sign. Well, there it says 16 square oh, feet. Thank you, Roger. Yes. Two sided backlit 16 square feet. That's what I don't think you can see all of that when the picture is being shared. I think there was more. Okay, so let me go back to. All right. So if it's 16 square feet. Um, but the commercial and industrial, it's on your premise. Yep. So that would, am I, unless I'm misreading this, that's up to 12 square feet. Right. Right, Bob? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So there's an 18 foot <clears throat> number. But that's for uh, businesses sharing a sign. You're not sharing that sign with any other business, are you? No. No. And and you, and you didn't take a measurement of that old sign. I I can't I I can't. That's probably twenty feet in the air. How long has that one been there? Uh, I don't know. I just purchased the business about three months ago. Oh, you did. Yeah, so where did you come up with the number, that 16 foot number? Uh, I didn't. I didn't come up with the 16 foot number. I'm not sure where that came from. All right. Well, so the, your design team came up with that figure. Uh, I I honestly don't know where it came. That 16 came from. This is. I just submitted. Uh, what's here? I know, but did you have any conversation with? The man who's building or the woman who's creating your sign? Oh, that's there it is right there. Okay. So that yeah, that's where he that's where it came from. Yeah, 16, five by five, 16 square feet, but our bylaw requires it to be 12 square feet. Well, I'm just sort of going back in time. When you asked this firm to create a sign for you, did you have any discussion about how big a sign you asked them to create? Uh, I just, I sent them all the, I went to the waitley.org and I downloaded the uh, regulations yep. and then I, I sent them that. Okay. There's a, there's a sign about two doors down for me for orchard trailers that I'm fairly certain is bigger than the one I'm looking to do. Well, do you think you could live with a sign that's 12 feet square, 12 square feet? Uh, I mean, I guess if I had to, I would, but it's just, you, well, you know, you try to... you, you're probably going to have to unless you seek a variance, which is very hard to get. So the special permit that you're seeking uh, tells us as a board that there's a, there's a maximum amount and our hands are tied to go above the maximum. Uh, we're always listening to what people have to say. And so it kind of sounds like 
just you just sort of stumbled into this and the sign size was fostered upon you and, and you don't really have it you're not particularly wedded to that size so I, I think it you know you have a hard case to say that it's got to be that size because it just ended up being that size without any particular forethought so um i would and we have to have three votes on the board but i would be um uh, inclined to vote against you and i'm always happy to hear what the other members have to say about it no, I, I agree. Are, are, are we looking to see if the petitioner wants to amend the special permit application and change the size of the sign? Or do we want to withdraw and come back with a plan that meets the bylaw? Because, I mean, at this moment, I would agree with Roger, I can't vote to approve this sign at, 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 the, at the proposed square footage. Yeah. Yeah, so what Deborah's offering you, and, and if you haven't been in front of any board before like this, you wouldn't have any you know, prior knowledge of it. But if, if we just vote and deny you, you can't come back for two years, on, at least on this exact same petition. Or, the, the rules are easier if you just withdraw your application and come back with the 12 foot, you know, with a sketch that meets the 12 foot requirement. And so, so if I so if I withdraw and then I'd have to I'd go through the the same the same thing to uh, you know pay again to have this put the application in again is that what is that what you're, am I understanding that correctly? Well, I guess we should think sound that out amongst the board members. Would we just let them amend? I wouldn't want to just amend on the fly. I'd want to see another. I'd want to see sketch. I tell you I, what, I, I would I want agree. to see. I would want to see the the professional guy measure the existing sign that's there if it's 20 feet up he can get up on a ladder and measure it and also come in with a sign that meets the requirements and showing us the dimensions and you know what i mean with a ruler on the side or a scale on the side to show allow us to do the math ourselves i, I understand with an oblong or oval the math is a little trickier but at least to give us an idea that it's um that it is what it says it is so the the sign that's there is currently not i'm wondering how that one got passed because that's not if you read all the if you read all the regulations that that sign that's currently there is not in compliance with it well i mean i give you credit for trying to do the right thing and, and following the rules and unfortunately there are some people who don't always do that and they may get away with it for a while so technically the building inspector could come at any time and order them to take down an illegal sign so you are better off doing it the right way as far as that's concerned. But as far as our board is concerned, do we want to just give them a chance to amend it, but in a more formal way rather than just on the fly? You what know? do you mean by a more formal way, Roger? On the fee again, as he's talking about. Just say, let you come back next month with a, with a revised plan. I mean, obviously it doesn't seem like there's any abutters here. So, no one would be harmed if he comes back with a smaller plan. I, I would be in favor of that. I would too. I All would right. Too. So Roger. this is what we're saying. If you can come back in a month, um, if, if you think a month is enough time with a plan that um, fits the actual bylaw, you can ask your, your, your sign person why he, since he had the regulations why he drew up something that wasn't regulation but I mean, yeah I leave it up I'll, to you i can have him i can have him do a new yeah a new sign you think or a new month, rendering yeah you think a month is enough time yeah i think so okay. roger yes. roger i would suggest that we waive the second fee it's this it's as if we were continuing it yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. right right okay so, Roger, I have a question. Looking at looking at their bylaws, it says you can have a sign up to eighteen square feet, uh, a freestanding sign, if you have all the businesses located on that one sign. You look at section. He said he, he said he was the only business on. But Fred, he said he was the only business on that sign. He's the only oh, only one business. Yeah. I asked him that question. He said he's the only one on that sign. Oh, okay. 
Well, I didn't know what that other, the lower sign says. If that's, that's the, same the, thing the, as the upper sign or not. New, yeah, it's the new logo. Oh, oh, okay. So there's only one business? Oh, okay. There's a new logo. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so November, calendar for November. We meet on Thursdays, the first Thursday of November. Oh, there's a calendar right there. The third. Sure. Yeah. So Eric, why don't we put you in for the first slot, which is 6.40 p.m. on uh, Thursday, November 3rd. 6.40, okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you then. All right, thanks, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you.